Hello and welcome to this episode of 365 Days of Astronomy. Today we are bringing you another episode of our recurring Space Stories series. This week we bring you another tale from free Wi-Fi on Mars. This time it's Chocolate Zombies by Scott Sigler, the tale of what happens when the wrong radiation uh, gets involved with the wrong algae. Chocolate Zombies by Scott Sigler. It wasn't all bad. At least the zombies didn't like the chocolate. What they did like was meat. And there wasn't a lot of meat on the station. Not unless Dave counted himself as meat, which the zombies seemed inclined to do, and Dave most certainly did not. I assure you, I'm not meat, Dave said. On the monitor, Lizzie sneered. Now, Dave, you know that's not true, she said. You are very much meat. And if I may be so bold, you look <laughs> really delicious. We all think so. Dave cleared his throat. <laughs> Lizzie seemed so normal. Well, kind of. She hadn't slept in three days by his count, and that's what caused the dark circles under her eyes that constantly flicked left and right, eyes that never focused on one thing for more than half a second. That's also what caused the limp hair, the shaking hands, and the ragged respiration. The paranoia? Lizzie had never really trusted anyone before, but now it was on another level. The dried flecks of blood on her chin, the dried flecks of blood on her chin, that wasn't caused by insomnia. That was from Pavel. Dave was going to miss Pavel. Dave had always told Pavel to lose weight. Pavel should have listened and, while he was at it, maybe gotten on the goddamn treadmill once in a while. Pavel's favorite joke had been, you don't have to be fast to outrun the zombie. You just have to be faster than the guy next to you. The irony? Dave had turned out to be faster than Pavel. Go figure. Lizzie, you guys have got to stop eating the paste, Dave said. You would say that, she said. You want us to starve. I don't want you to starve. Then come out of the lab and feed us, Dave. She and the others would eat him. There was no doubt about that anymore. He'd watched the Pavel recording 15 times already. He watched it every time he deluded himself into thinking this wasn't happening, that the crew members he'd traveled with for seven years weren't killing and eating each other, that the woman he'd met in training and proposed to on this very trip wasn't looking at him right now like he was a pork chop. Pavel hadn't gone quietly, or quickly for that matter. Lizzie was a doctor, and so were Apollo and Negby, and as such, they avoided Pavel's vi vital organs for days. Dave could have rationalized what they did, maybe, if they'd used anesthesia, but they didn't. They also could have cut Pavel's vocal cords, done something to stop the screaming, the crying, the begging, but they hadn't done that either. He didn't know who these people were anymore. Just three months ago, they'd been the brightest of the brightest, the best of the best, some of the top young scientists the world had to offer. An eight-year trip to the outer arm of NGC 2481 to set up a base where humanity would eventually explore the outer rim of a black hole. Eight years out, ten years on, eight years back, their youth, most of their adult life, given to the project, given to humanity, given to history. Those that lived would return to Earth in their 50s or 60s, and they, would, and they had all agreed on one thing. The sacrifice was worth every minute, every second. You're not going to get me, Dave said to Lizzie. We can fix this. We can work together, find something else for you to eat. There is nothing else, Lizzie said. You ate all the bacon buddy bars. He hadn't eaten them all, not yet. But there were only five bars left. Half a bar for breakfast, half for dinner, 
algae paste flowed from every faucet on the ship, and even the flavorators still worked. He could have algae that tasted like cheese, beef, chicken, apples, oranges, and a dozen other taste sensations. Trouble was, since they'd gone into orbit at XV-284, the algae had changed. It made Dave puke. If he'd thought chicken-flavored algae tasted peculiar going down, he now knew it tasted far better than when it came back up. I'm out of bacon buddy bars, Dave said. You're a liar, Lizzie said. You're always a liar, Dave. You think I didn't know about you and Carmen in the fuel generator room? Maybe we can focus on the fact that you want to kill and eat me, then handle our relationship issues later. <laughs> Lizzie smiled. You've got that out of order, lover. <laughs> it's eat you, and then kill you, eventually. Dave closed his eyes, but couldn't get rid of the vision of an armless, legless, still twitching Pavel. He could have very well been part of the Pavel dinner party if he hadn't been allergic to whatever genetic mutation had occurred in the spirulina algae that made up 90% of the station's food supply. The bacon buddy bars? Those were supposed to be treats. Each crew member got one a week. Chocolate, a treat, but the mission planners hadn't wasted weight on empty calories alone. 12 ounces of salted bacon wrapped in seaweed, topped by one layer of corn cake, a second layer of concentrated, fu uh, of concentrated fruit, the whole thing coated in chocolate and topped with ground almonds and walnuts. He was still alive because of candy bars. He couldn't eat the station's primary food source, and that was the only reason he wasn't a paranoid and that was the only reason he wasn't a paranoid insomniac looking for a human snack. The others ate the algae. That made them want to eat people who didn't eat algae. And Dave was the only one left. I'm not meat, Lizzie. <laughs> you already said that, Dave. I'm not. We can fix this. She smiled and shook her head. They were, there were red smears on her teeth. Her gums were bleeding. There's nothing to fix, you cheating bastard. Unless I can reprogram the flavorators to make me some bread. Then I'll fix a sandwich with you in it. Dave's hand moved of its own accord, reached out and slapped the disconnect button. Lizzie's horrific face blinked out. Dave stared at the control panel, listened to his own ragged breathing. There was no rescue. No one could come get him. There was no place to run. They wanted him dead, and that left him with only two choices. Cure them all, or kill them all, one by one. The end. Turn on your mic. Nightmare inducing. <laughs> Sorry, I was checking up on the st severe thunderstorm warnings that were coming in on my phone. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is, uh, yes, what was the name of that one? Chocolate, uh, zombies? chocolate zombies. It's freely available at free wi fi on mars.org. What truly makes this thing is is the uh, the artwork that goes with it as if you're as you're reading. So you probably won't be able to see. I'll pull it up, up and screen share it in okay, just a so second. Okay, screen share. Uh, the artwork uh, really makes it, especially the uh, bacon buddy bar advertisement that's elsewhere in the book. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, Sigler is, is uh, I love him to death, but he's a messed up mofo. <laughs> the stuff that comes out of his brain. It's fantastic. Um, oh, we have a question uh, in from uh, Ron Marish. Hello, we're broadcasting from just east of St. Louis. Uh, so we're actually over the river in Illinois, uh, and that's why we're in the Midwest getting thunderstorms. Um, but no tornado warnings, so no, that's pretty good. So far. Uh, so far. <laughs> so you're going to uh, screen share that uh, free Wi-Fi on Mars while I catch up on what's going on. Yeah, so I'm going to need to 
open random things. Okay. Open all the things. So uh, Michael's pointed out we have 10 hours down, 10 hours of, of uh, live astronomy, science, education. Kyle's laughing at us. <laughs> what is <laughs> of science and education content? What am I looking at? The other... Oh, the that's room? yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I need to mute the other camera. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was all show up. What am I looking at? <laughs> My own house. That's what um, I was looking at. Okay. What was the next segment going to be? Because we're getting an offer um, to look at a live webcam view of the moon. At the moment, I know astrophotography was. Yeah, go for that. It's pouring rain. We can't do astrophotography. We can't do astrophotography. So, uh, let's see if I can get this. Means. And I'm looking for the free Wi-Fi oh, 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 on Mars.org. I think that's the right one. So that is going out to James McGee. Uh, you have a live webcam view of the moon. Um, that would be excellent since it is pouring rain here and lightning and thunder. And I've just sent you an invite uh, to this hangout uh, if you're willing to share the moon with people because we have nothing to share but clouds. Yeah. And oh my God. What? The, the thunder and lightning yes. outside. <laughs> and we have my husband standing here looking for what we want from Wang Gang for dinner. I want drunken rice. No, I want drunken rice. It's new. I know. I asked her that the last time. I'm like, don't you mean drunken noodles? No, Apparently, drunken rice. rice can be drunk too. Yes, with tofu. Um, I don't. Uh, gosh, I only ever get the lunch specials. I don't know what they have normally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I usually get Thai basil fried rice with tofu, or chicken, or something. Good lord. There goes the thunder. Um, yeah, I, I, I eat all the foods. <laughs> Surprise me! <laughs> so there we go. There's a local advertisement for Wang Gang. <laughs> Asian fusion. You they they are film. what feeds our team, quite oh honestly. Yes, it's true. It's true. Um, okay, so we'll uh, remind you guys. So free Wi-Fi on Mars.com is the website where you can see the comic book slash activity book that um, Pamela just read from. Uh, so there are four short stories in there, lots of amazing art and some fun astronomy activities as well, science and education activities. Um, and if you see us at DragonCon, we will have them for sale, the actual physical uh, books for sale. Um, and, and the first, I think, 1,000 that we have, we're going to be giving away to school groups, and then we're going to have 200 to sell that uh, they were purchased off of different sets of money. Um, so if you're a school teacher and you have a classroom, we can send you a classroom set of these. Um, and by school teacher, I mean university professor, because uh, really these are designed for adults. So if you're a university professor teaching Astro 101 and you want to incorporate science fiction into your classroom, we have, we have an answer. And this is part of what we do at CosmoQuest. We, we look for creative partnerships to get new science out to the public. Um, so while I'm downloading the free Wi-Fi on Mars, I am going to share what we're experiencing right now because it's really quite dramatic on our roof. Um, hello, you can in the attic. <laughs> yeah, and there's a sunlight or skylight above us. So there you go. We're the red dot. <laughs> yep, <laughs> that's what's over. So us. this will hopefully pass quickly, and. Um, I'm trying to turn on the severe weather warnings. Oh, yeah, not. we're we're under. I was getting a thunderstorm warnings, but not tornado warnings. Okay, then uh, we're fine. The ones from April were still on my phone. <laughs> oddly <laughs> enough, whatevs. Um, okay, so there's free Wi-Fi on Mars. Do you want to show that? I'm I'm trying. Okay. I'm, um, this computer is now sad. And I'm going to check. On the donations page. Okay, we've broken the 9,000 mark. We are oh, 5%, awesome. but uh, keep donating, keep sharing. I know we've gotten some, some great match donations, and uh, we'll have other donations coming in um, from Shirley Ramix uh, and from Dark Overlord Media as well. So thank you guys. Um, so we've broken 9,000. Remember, you're Money is going to help us create science programs, citizen science programs, uh, create science education materials, and uh, keep putting out all the uh, content we put out as well, the video content, the podcasts, and all that good stuff. 
Um, and also, I know Tim has checked in that there have been a few orders in the Astro Gear store. So uh, you can either donate at cosmoquest.org slash donate. You can go to the Astro Gear store, astrogear.org. And uh, that's where you can pick up some fun merch and uh and uh, show your show your love of science too. You get this. Uh, you can buy cool nerdy T-shirts that uh, people will ask you, "What is that?" And uh, you can talk all about uh, how cool the universe is. So yay to that. Um, okay, I've had a Chrome fail, so okay. I need to come back in before I can show that. Okie doke. All good. Uh, so that's nine thousand mark that we're at. So remember, no donation is too small. We are superly grateful uh, for we any amount. We request your coffee funds. <laughs> <laughs> yes, or slushy. Somebody mentioned that their slushy, slushy fund is going smoothie. This. Yes, tea. <laughs> I, I think my favorite donation I ever heard someone come up with, with ever before was Mike Simonson. Uh, he donated to the AVSO. Uh, he decided he needed to lose weight and clean up his lifestyle and get healthy, and so he donated his cigarette fund to the AVSO and gave up smoking. Yes. So if any of you want to get healthy and give up smoking, we'll take your money. Timothy Legauer. <laughs> She just totally called out her significant other. That's awesome. <laughs> it's only because I love him and want him to live forever. <laughs> or at least as long as I do. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Those e-cigarettes cost awesome. money too. <laughs> so yay, we're celebrating the 9,000 mark in the comments. Uh, and people are also asking what drunken rice actually is. <laughs> You will get to see it soon because it's. it's uh, did you send your husband out in the rain? No, no. We we are asking to deliver in the rain. So we're asking for a delivery person to come out. In we the will rain. tip them well. Okay. Yes, we do tip well. <laughs> and we do tip well. And at the my husband, who, who is a computer scientist, I think is tipping us with the food tonight. Um, so uh, drunken rice is very spicy rice. If you've ever had the Thai dish drunken noodles. Uh, take good jasmine rice, coat it in all sorts of all the good stuff, um, add some mint, add some basil, I get it with tofu, and I consider it awesome. Okay, I totally was not paying attention to the comments during the story. I was over there stretching, um, and it's <laughs> gravitational bacon waves. <laughs> I love you guys. Oh, and flocculent eggs. I haven't done flocculent! <laughs> Flocular Galaxy! <laughs> if you uh, watch the virtual star party, uh, you've seen me do that, possibly. Um, so, yes, thank you. For the, the YouTube comments are hopping tonight. Um, I'm very excited that you guys are spending your Saturday night with us um, and uh, conversing and sharing. And, dude, that's, that's fantastic. So share the YouTube link. Get your friends in watching and commenting and chatting with us as well. Uh, this has been uh, really cool. We couldn't just talk into the ether and not have feedback. So Yeah, no, this this is really making our evening much more pleasant. And I apologize that I keep looking over here. Um, but this is what allows me to do things like say, hey, this is free Wi-Fi on Mars. Oh, you can oh, download sure. the entire PDF online. And it's just filled with page after page of amazing graphics. So we have a story by Nathan Lowell. I'm just going to flip through quickly, let you see all of the amazing stuff. Um, and each of these stories was written after we subjected these authors to a science talk on the science of light echoes from quasars, which are colloquially called vorverbs. Um, Nathan's story, if you know Nathan Lowell's writing, he can write a lot. So this is the one that has the most words in it. Uh, so I'm going to just keep going. Um, there's a crossword puzzle, including a crossword written with galaxies. Um, we have Chocolate Zombies is the story I just read. Um, so here's just some really amazing artwork of the zombie girl in it. And what we did with these four authors is... Um, and Mer Lafferty and Christiana Ellis were, were the other two, um, is, is we asked the authors to listen to the science talk, and then we gave each of them a starting abstract, the start of a story that incorporated this, the science of the objects we were talking about. In, in the case of Chocolate Zombies, it incorporated the radiation uh, being emitted from the accretion disk around a black hole. And it's that radiation that lights up the vorverbs, or in this case, lights up the algae and makes the algae turn human beings 
into chemically altered zombies. Uh, we tried to keep everything as scientifically accurate as possible, and it is entirely possible that someone could someday come up with a drug, a virus, uh, a mutation of some sort that would cause, just like rabies causes a sudden fear of water, well, could cause a sudden need to devour meat. Um, it all depends on how the, the brain is affected by a disease. Uh, each of these stories in its own way is a science fiction story based on new science. And I encourage you to check it out. And these are the types of projects that we look to do at CosmoQuest. We look to do the things that are a little bit creative or a lot creative and get people thinking and doing science in new and interesting ways. Uh, we keep it real with moon mappers, Vesta mappers, and Mercury mappers, keeping people doing actual NASA science. Um, but then we get them learning. Um, not all learning has to be a talking head at the front of the room. We like to get people learning through science fiction, through activity, through food. Um, clearly not cake pops. That was fail. While he was at it, maybe gotten on the goddamn treadmill once in a while. Pavel's favorite joke had been, you don't have to be fast to outrun the zombie. You just have to be faster than the guy next to you. The irony? <laughs> Dave had turned out to be faster than Pavel. Go figure. Lizzie, you guys have got to stop eating the paste, Dave said. You would say that, she said. You want us to starve. I don't want you to starve. Then come out and cause the limp hair, the shaking hands, and the ragged respiration. The paranoia? Lizzie had never really trusted anyone before. But now it was on another level. The dried flecks of blood on her chin. The dried flecks of blood on her chin. That wasn't caused by insomnia. That was from Pavel. Dave was going to miss Pavel. Dave had always told Pavel to lose weight. Pavel should have listened and Bigler. It wasn't all bad. At least the zombies didn't like the chocolate. What they did like was meat. And there wasn't a lot of meat on the station. Not unless Dave counted himself as meat, which the zombies seemed inclined to do, and Dave most certainly did not. I assure you, I'm not meat, Dave said. On the monitor, Lizzie sneered. Now, Dave, you know that's not true. Hello, and welcome to this episode of 365 Days of Astronomy. Today, we are bringing you another episode of our recurring Space Stories series. This week, we bring you another tale from free Wi-Fi on Mars. This time, it's Chocolate Zombies by Scott Sigler, the tale of what happens when the wrong radiation uh, gets involved with the wrong algae. Chocolate Zombies by Scott Sigler, she said. You are very much meat. And if I may be so bold, you look <laughs> really delicious. We all think so. Dave cleared his throat. <laughs> Lizzie seemed so normal. Well, kind of. She hadn't slept in three days by his count, and that's what caused the dark circles under her eyes that constantly flicked left and right, eyes that never focused on one thing for more than half a second. That's also what 